pain. <laughs> I look like I work at Macy's and I'm like, hi, can I give you a makeover? <laughs> hi, I'm Gucci Westman and we are doing our makeup and friends today with Christy Turlington. Christy attempted to set me up with her brother-in-law a long time ago. Things worked out the way they were supposed to be, but I just thought that was so nice that Christy maybe wanted to be my sister. I kind of like sisters. I know we are. Could be even closer. Christy was the first person I told outside of obviously David and my mom that I was pregnant with Dash. She talked me through all of, you know, these visualization techniques that I could use through the birthing process, which none of that worked out for me, but <laughs> <laughs> one minute you're running a marathon for every run that counts, and another you're closing Marc Jacobs during Fashion Week, and you're 51? 50. Like, where have you impacted the most? Like, would you say with your work? When I started Every Mother Counts, people were not talking about women dying in childbirth, and only when I had the unexpected complication after childbirth did I learn that literally hundreds of thousands of girls and women die every year from pregnancy and childbirth-related complications. Can't un learn mm -hmm. that kind of information. So right. I went back to school to work on a master's in public health and I made a documentary film called No Woman No Cry. And both of those endeavors really just got me deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. The United States is probably the most shocking because we've actually gotten worse. We're ranked 55th in the world. For what does that health. say about that? Oh. It says that we have a really broken healthcare system. Medical professionals don't always listen to patients or our system is set up so that women don't have the time to really get to know their provider right. and vice right. versa. Yeah. But a lot of women don't have choice. Their coverage is Medicaid, but Medicaid's really sporadic. Um, the other piece is educating healthcare workers. I mean, they're not doing as much emergency preparedness. Oftentimes people compare like being a pilot or working mm -hmm. in aviation to right. what needs to happen in maternity right. care. My dad was a pilot, so yeah. every night before mm -hmm. he had a flight, yeah. he'd study like a book like this. Yeah. Our doctors don't do that. I bet you a lot of people, Christy, wonder what your beauty routine is. I don't really do much, as you know. I'm like a very less is more kind of person. I like get out the door. I don't really wear very much makeup. My skincare is super, super simple. Things that are nature-based, so like Biotherm has been like my go-to. The product was really created around marine um, biology. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not one to like do anything chemical. No, or... she's never done anything. I doubt you ever will. I, I never will. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, I think there is like a creative kind of outlet. Mm -hmm. So there's always been this sort of dichotomy. I worked for Calvin Klein where you'd have no makeup. Yeah. And then I also Versace. would do things for Versace yeah. where it was completely over the top. When I was 14, or in a weird way, it kind of got me out of being so focused on myself. You can't really tell what your ethnic background is. Like that was great in fashion because mm -hmm. like, I could be transformed easily without yeah. a ton of makeup. You kind of experienced everything, yeah. and then you came back to what felt authentic and intuitive. And that's kind of how I came to the terms of like I feel better, more natural, but. If I didn't have the opportunity to sort of see myself a bunch of different ways, I might not have known that, to, to what we were saying before. Some people just might feel the most confident when they have more, right? When they're yeah. in, like, dressed more colorfully, have more makeup, like, I think, and yeah. that's the thing that I think is very individual. My mom's generation always promised to come before you go out. And for me, I've always been like, oh gosh, I never wear lipstick when I go out. You have two kids, but Grace is 16. How would you feel about her um, entering the modeling world? I was very lucky that I had such a you positive really experience, were, I but I understand agree. that I was lucky. There was just no protection for minors. If I could work on a commercial and have a child actor, they had a union, and they, they had, had set hours. Yeah, set mm -hmm. hours, they had your homework. There's nothing like that. But if she did say, Mom, I really want to do this, I would say, great. That's great. If you still feel the same way when you're 18, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Mark Jacobs, what went Well, down? Mark's a friend of mine for many, many years. I stopped run working on the runway in the mid-90s. I hadn't done one in 20-some years. And I had no desire to do one. It was not my favorite part of the job. There's no privacy. It's made it not fun. Yeah. You couldn't even pretend it was fun and like have a yeah. catch up with a girlfriend backstage because there was a microphone over your head. Makeup and friends. <laughs> Nick called me and he said, um, hey, what, you know, what would you think about? And I was on my way 
um, out of the city and I was in the car and I didn't, I didn't say no right away, which just surprised me and it surprised him. He's like, I know you're gonna probably say no. Um, but I said, you know, huh. The way that they were gonna have the, the runway and mm -hmm. in the armory mm -hmm. and this like very elegant, very kind of classical mm -hmm. kind of collection. It just sounded more appealing than, because mm -hmm. I've been asked over the years, I just haven't been inclined. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, can you send me a sketch? Uh. Doing a fashion show today is very different than it was in the 90s. I mean, gosh. I used to have to wear 10 outfits for every show. Not fun at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so now you do one outfit. It was over in like eight minutes. Did you do anything to prepare or were you just like, I mean, yeah. no. I had an Every Mother Counts board meeting. I went from that meeting to the armory. And my daughter came, which was fun actually, because. She really doesn't know me as a model. So I was like, if I'm gonna just do this one when more time, I might as, as well have her see it. She came from a volleyball game and changed in the car. And I think she was like, huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite covers of all time, I think it is my favorite cover, was our Vogue cover with Stephen Klein. The when Vogue, and the doing yoga, a yoga pose. It's good skin, it's Simple. super elegant. It's so just, understated. Oh. And I remember it was the end of the day, you were leaving, and Pani Goodman came in, legend, and she said, what about this? Why don't we try this with a dress? We all were like, Luke Skywalker moment. It was like crazy, we were just like Jedi. I was still surprised that I ever made it, because, I know. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you feel a situation like that, and you're like, oh, they'll never do yeah. that. Yeah. But then she did. I just also want to make sure. I'm mean, gonna go to this point. event with like one side of my face done and <laughs> like a Picasso. And you can be like, thanks, Gucci. And be like, makeup <laughs> in front of me. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm doing to yourself. No. Wait, Christy, do you want to see yourself? Okay, well, this is the smallest mirror in the world. But <laughs> my no, eyes are like, terrible. Where do you want these? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna freak me out. They're like, oh gosh. Oh no, they're good. Oh, you like? I like that color in me. Oh my god, I'm so red. Oh, I was nervous. Do you look at yourself there, or do you look at that? Um, maybe you. Wait, is it fuzzy or is it? That's our eyes. We don't have our glasses. We don't have our. Glasses. Thank you for letting me do your makeup, and thank you for joining us on Makeup and Friends. And we have Lexi and Live.